are you are listening live to uh, what we have going on here, our fundraiser at the original Sundance Saloon out here in Mundelein. So uh, we're going to give you a little taste of what's I'm happening down here. They're sounding the amazing. Uh, so come on down and join us. Sometimes my mind Axe and the Hatchet will be up me. in about an hour. We'd love it to have you. Keeps adding up. I think I'm cracking up. Am I just paranoid or am I so... Everybody, we're coming at you live uh, from the Sundance Saloon here in Mundelein, uh, WRLR. Uh, Eddie back with you. I have Dave. Hey, how's it going, Ed? Tuesday night's show. What, what's your show called again? Reality Radio on Tuesday nights, Reality's Rhythms Thursday nights, and Real Gardening for Real Gardeners on Sundays. You're doing three nights on WRLR. That's right, man. Right. Right. <laughs> we are joined with yes. uh, another member. Uh, we got of two more members of uh, Axe and the Hatchet Men. So I had your band, less the two of you, on my show last night when really well, uh, extremely talented group of kids, sorry, teens, <laughs> young young men. Um, <laughs> and uh, of course, you can't play you know the trumpet in a recording studio like that. You'd blow out the microphones. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's you're, you're so it's good to have you here now so we can do some interview time. What's your name? Yeah, uh, My name is Quinn Dolan, Quinn. and I play the tenor saxophone for oh, Axe okay. Very cool. Very cool. All right, yeah, so we got we got a lowdown last night about the history of it, about uh, it was, uh, was it Sal and uh, Axel kind of started the whole thing. So when did you mm -hmm. come along? Well, um, it was just one day in the hallway. Um, I was friends, previous friends with Sal, and he came up to me and said, hey, our other saxophone has left the band. Would you want to join? And this is about maybe, like, uh, last winter after, like, the summer's happened. They've been together for a little bit. And so me and Kenny joined at the same time, and our first gig was in Memphis at, like, the International Blues Festival. And it was really cool. And... We've been rocking out ever since. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I'm um, excited to see the band with the two with the with the horns in there tonight. Uh, they were just amazing. I said, really. So I play guitar and I studied some theory on my own. No near, no no near where you guys are at, but uh, I can still recognize just the sophistication of you, the, the composition of the songs and everything else, the melody lines, the harmonies, everything. Very, very, very talented. So I'm excited to see the band, the horns in there too. Um, are you a part of the whole jazz program at, uh, at the school? Do you go to Warren or Grover? Yeah, um, me, uh, Hunter, Logan, and Kenny are all, or sorry, not Logan. Um, uh, hey. Logan hey. left the band, yeah. <laughs> well, that story was but so all, all the kids who go to Warren, like from our band, are in the same jazz band now. So it's, it's pretty fun to play with them every day. And I get uh, a little more jazz since I'm a saxophone. And, uh, uh, tenor sax, you said? Yes. That's very cool. Saxophone is just an amazing instrument. Um, and it seems very like, two of those instruments, again, having played guitar and a little piano, you look at the saxophone and you're like, how did somebody think of that? Like, hey, I'm going to oh, yeah. do all these things here and it's going to sound cool. Uh, do you know anything about the history of the instrument? Um, I don't know much of the history, but I know, I think originally they had, like, the clarinet, like, it was, it was, the clarinet was made before, and then, like, the saxophone was derived from that, but there's just so much you can do with, like, a saxophone and its tone and, like, to sound, um, like, the way you want. You can add, like, like, smoother tone, like, uh, Kenny G, or there could be, like, any, like, of, like, a, like, just, like, a hard tone. It just, yeah, it's, like, it's crazy. Yeah, like, there were more raw blues and that kind yeah. of thing. It's a very versatile instrument. Well, very cool. So you're having a good time with them. You guys get a lot of gigs. I noticed. Yeah, could you put... <laughs> it's not moving. 
on the other side. Sorry. There you go. There you go. Um, so, yeah, you guys get a lot of gigs. You can fill up really fast. How do you, how do you feel about balancing that with school and everything? Um, well, I'm in my senior year, so everything's like, I just have to get through this year and like it's it's not as stressful as junior year and so it's not like very bad we've had like a couple gigs on weekdays but it's mostly on the weekends so there's nothing really to interfere and like um i know i think everybody in the band would put this like a gig or like playing for the band in front of um whatever else they were doing at that moment sure. so it's, it's just a really cool experience and that's great and do you have a personal ambition to continue with music afterward like to go to school for like do you want a degree in it or anything like that or um i might go with a minor in it um it's not like what i'm going to be looking for, like in the future or i just i'll probably play in a jazz band for sure in college um but if or just play with these guys yeah. continue playing with these guys i would yeah. love to play with these guys forever like yeah it sounds good man these guys are extremely talented and good for you that's very cool i can't wait to hear you guys with the full ensemble Oh, Quinn, yeah. did you say your name was? Quinn, yeah. Quinn, cool. David, thank you very much. Who's your, who's your buddy? Uh, this is Phil Pistoni. Phil. Another one of the How are you doing, man. Phil? Good. Good, good to meet you. My name is David. This is Ed. Nice Phil. to meet you. Hey. So what do you play for Axe and the Hatchet Uh Trumpet. Nice. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I had, like I was telling Quinn, I had the band on last night on my show, on last YouTube, because you can't play, play brass in the studio like that. wouldn't work very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I'm excited to see the whole ensemble tonight. Just the, I was telling uh, Quinn and the guys last night, you know, I play guitar and I have a little bit of new uh, music theory knowledge. Enough, just enough where I can recognize the sophistication of the composition of the songs and the skill level. I mean, this is like some serious stuff here. Yeah. The melodies that go over it, the harmonies, everything else, the riffs, I was like extremely impressed. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, so how long have you been in the band? Um, really ever since it was formed. I mean, oh, really? pretty much, uh, I want to say last May, last June. Yeah. Right on. And uh, you play, you say you play trumpet? Yep. Right on. So do you get to, uh, to the brass guys here, do you guys to write your own melody lines, or does somebody... Uh, is it sometimes, a so uh, Axel and Kenny write most of the tunes, and sometimes they'll have an idea for a horn part, but um, we also have a trombone player, so sometimes the three of us will figure our harmonies and everything out. Uh, um, so, is the trombone player yeah. here? No, he's not. He's at uh, a band concert right now. That's too bad. Okay, right on. So yeah, uh, the the yeah the songs we were playing last night, Peach Tree and the, the I can't remember the names of them, but uh, they were just remarkable songs, very very well written. Um, so do you have any plans to uh, in the future for the band or like pursuing? Are you a senior? Uh, no, I'm a junior. You're a junior. You're at Grays Lake or Warren? Uh, I actually go to school at Main South in Park Ridge. Well, how'd you get a hold of these guys? Um, so, Axel and our first sax player and Timmy, our trombone player. Um, all used to be in the same Midwest Young Artist Conservatory oh, yeah. jazz mm -hmm. combo. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so, yeah, we met through there and got this together, and it's just been up and up ever since. Right on. Very cool. All right. Yeah. So, uh, any uh, future plans? You guys got a lot of gigs. I was telling Quinn that, yes. too. You guys, it's crazy. Well, um, <laughs> right now, the band's mission is just to uh, do as many shows as we can, and uh, we're going to be going to Memphis in, uh, at the end of January for the uh, International Blues Festival. Really? Yeah, we were there this past January, and we're going again, so we're pretty excited. And uh, we're working on finishing an EP, hopefully out sometime in January, so uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what the guys were saying last night. I really would like to have you guys back on the show after that comes out. Oh, sure. that'd be very, very cool. Yeah. Um, well, right now, how are your holidays going, just personally? Oh, well, um, got finals this week. And, Is um, rock fandom, like, uh, interfering with your family <laughs> life or anything like that? Not, not totally, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, wrapping up school and uh, looking forward to break. Right Practicing on. a lot. Yeah. Very cool. Um, how many songs on the EP? Usually there's five to six. Uh, yeah. About the same? Yep. Right on. Very cool. Excited about it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we finished our uh, recording at Gremlin Studios. Where is that? Night. In uh, uh, 
Aurora or Geneva. One of the two. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, um, do you guys have any, do anybody in the band have their own recording stuff that you start with as a rough draft, or do you, um, how do you guys maintain the sort of the unity of the song? Nothing more than iPhones, really. Okay. Um, <laughs> Everybody yeah. says their iPhones on front of them. Yeah. <laughs> right on, very cool. Well, I, like I said, I'm really excited to hear the, the whole ensemble tonight. Uh, so thanks for coming on the air, Phil. Yeah, right? thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you like. Yeah. Stay in touch. We look forward to seeing you, hearing your music. Uh, when the EP comes out, we'll be playing you guys on, the, on our radio show. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Appreciate it. Thanks for being with us. All right. Thanks. We are WRLR. We're coming at you live from the original Sundance Saloon. We'll be back after this. Joining me again here at the control desk is my morning partner, Biz. We've been up for a long time today. Oh, my gosh. Today has been the longest day of my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, we are, uh, Biz and Eddie, and we do the Waking Up Lake County every Friday morning from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. And, yeah, so it's been, like, kind of a, uh, a long day. But we are broadcasting live from the original Sundance Saloon in Mundelein. And we are putting on a fundraiser to help raise money for the station. Yes, and that's what we're here for. And this is the opening band coming at you. You're actually hearing them in the background uh, from School of Rock in Libertyville. And uh, they're sounding amazing. Yes, this uh, the School of Rock band is really incredible. They are doing such a good job, and they're really rocking out here tonight. So yeah. we want everybody to come out, have a good time. There's drinks, there's food. It's a uh, everybody, uh, all ages party here tonight. Yeah. All are welcome. $20 uh, for everybody's welcome. Yeah. grown-ups and 15 bucks for students. I like how you say grown-ups. I always say that the air quotes too. <laughs> grown ups. Right. Those who think they're adults, but not really. <laughs> I'm legally a grown up. <laughs> what's, what's Jimmy Buffett's phrase? Um, growing older, but not up. Yes. That's what Jimmy's favorite phrase is. You probably hear the band in the background. They're like really, really doing a good job. No, yeah, I, I just faded them down because they're, they're, they're sounding really good. <laughs> <laughs> and they, the, what, what did, uh, what did the, what did the manager, their manager John. say? They've only been together for a little while. For about, yeah, you, not even that long. I think there's um, students that come from all different schools get together and they just kind of rock out. And so they do shows all over Illinois, Lake County, Kenosha area. So yeah, big and little corner of a basketball game all the way up to something like this. Yes, and let's talk about um, some upcoming events for Axe and the Hatchet Men, who is performing tonight uh, to help raise headliners. money. Yes. They are the headliners, yeah. And so they have events coming up on Sunday, December 15th in Winnetka, the Winnetka Chapel. Uh, so that's an all-ages show sponsored by Val, ValsList.com, and that's from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. again this sun, or yeah, it's this Sunday, December 15th. Yeah. So they're Coming busy right group. Uh, next, they will be performing Friday, December 20th, uh, at Cary in Cary, Illinois, at Happy's General Store and Bar. Ooh, it's not just a bar, not just a general store. General store and bar. <laughs> As a general store and bar. Yeah. That's really interesting. I would love to see what that looks I like. Oh, yeah. So that's from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Woo! Oh, it's almost past their bedtime. Way, well, past my bedtime. I don't know. <laughs> and then we have, uh, then they will be performing on Friday, January 17th, 2020 in Rockford, Illinois. And uh, then that would be from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. All Ages Show. And that's sponsored by Crossroads Blues Society. And then they have two more performances to kick off the new year, Friday, January 31st, in Memphis, Tennessee. Now that's going to be a wild one. Beale Street. They're going back to Beale Street because they were talking about that before. And then going into Friday, February 7th, back in Mundelein. They're doing the Carmel Street scenes, which is amazing. And do you know what that is? No, what is that? So Carmel Street Scenes is when they actually take Carmel High School and they convert it into a nightclub <laughs> where different classrooms turn into different nightclubs and they serve booze, live music, and all this stuff, and proceeds go to the school. Who puts this on? The school does? Yeah. It's, it's a fundraiser for the school, by the yeah. school? Yeah, it's a, wow. it's a Catholic school. Oh, so they can do whatever the heck they want. Yeah. 
So right now, uh, we we are. Yeah, you can hit those buttons. I'm not good at hitting buttons. We are being joined. Yes, we are being joined by a very special guest here, and this is John Ellis. This is uh, the father of Axel Ellis, and um, how are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. Yeah, we're so happy that you're here to join us today. This is fantastic. Tonight. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. So tell us tell us about your uh, your son and your involvement with Axe and the Hatchet Men. Oh, God. Um, my involvement. Well, Axe is my son, and... Uh, he started playing guitar when he was five years old. Oh, wow. He was playing at five? At five years old. And then uh, when he was about eight or so, he started going to open mics and stuff. And uh, he just seemed like a natural. No fear. He no would, fear at he all. He would get up and play and scream in front of people. And uh, crowds loved it. And by nine, he had his first little rock band going. Triple um, A with a couple of neighborhood kids. Mm -hmm. And they had so much fun. And... Audiences just ate it up, you know, cute little kids that could play Aww. and sing. Yeah. <laughs> and so we've been doing it ever since. You know, we just look for opportunities, and uh, a lot of opportunities kind of find him. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets out and plays in front of people, and people come up, and they want to know more, and they have opportunities. And one thing has led to another, and uh, it's been a great ride. A That's amazing. And so um, so you kind of act as the general manager for Axe and the Hatchet Man. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. They're at school all day, so <laughs> I take a lot of phone calls and emails and that So is kind of it thing. is it mostly you or are the other parents oh, involved? Oh, there are some other parents that are very much involved. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, in particular, Mike, uh, Hunter, the bass player's dad, is like an avid supporter, and he just can't get enough, and he's working constantly, day and night, you know, he'll text me at midnight, uh, he's, he's doing all the social media stuff, or not all of it, Kenny does all the Instagram, uh, but Mike does all the Facebook stuff, and just a lot of other stuff, all the stage gear, the signs that you see, and all the printed material, Mike does all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It takes a village. It's definitely not an operation that one person can operate. No, There's you're right. Definitely yeah. dependent on each other, right? Well, we all have jobs. Yeah, right. You know, so yeah. this is kind of our extracurricular activity. <laughs> yeah, That's awesome. But so, it's fun. I mean, you've seen the band, right? Yes. Oh, you know what? Actually, I haven't yet. Oh, you haven't? I haven't Video. seen them live. Okay. Yeah, so I'm really excited to see them live tonight, right but ha you haven't seen them live either. Okay. This is my first exposure to them, so I'm excited. They seem like a talented bunch, sharp kids. It's fun. I'm, I'm wagering you're going to enjoy it. Awesome, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we've been, we've, we've been looking forward to this for a while, so this, this, this should be a good night. So where where has the band performed within the area? Oh, my God. A lot. I mean, all over. Um, northwest suburbs here and in the city. They've had, like, some of the highlights is um, they were invited. Uh, they won a battle of the bands in Evanston at a club called Evanston Rocks. That was last year in November. And as a prize for that, they went on WGN Radio with mm -hmm. Rokan. They had a live music Fridays program. And uh, from there, a lot of things started to happen. Uh, I don't know what their listenership is, but I think it's several hundred thousand. Sure. And uh, wow. they started playing festivals all over the area after that. Um, Winnetka Fest called right away the next day. And that, that's a pretty big, well-promoted um, right. festival. Yeah. Um, they've been to, uh, we do a lot with the Blues Society in Chicago and uh, now the one in Rockford also. And uh, there's a big thing every year called the International Blues Challenge. And that takes place in Memphis. Uh, this year is the 36th annual, and this will be the third time Axel's been there. So what is the challenge? So there's, there's uh, things called blues societies all over the world, and it's these people who love the blues and trying to promote the blues and keep that uh, American music alive. Um, and so every year, each blue society all around the world will have a challenge in their community, and the best band moves on to Memphis to the International Blues Challenge. So every year in January in Memphis, it's over 250 bands oh my gosh. all over the That's world. That's huge. It's huge. It's wow. an unbelievable event. And it happens all up and down Beale Street. It, I think there's 20-some venues. 
And so simultaneously, there's this battle of the bands going on okay. all week. And by the end of the week, they whittled down 250 bands to two winners. Wait, how, how did they do that? How did they determine? It's judged. It's judged by how many judged people? by oh. music professionals. Um, well, there's three or four judges at each of the 20-some venues. It's a huge event. Wow. Very so this is, well this is organized. A really, this is a really big deal, then. It's really cool, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's huge. So how far did, did they get last well, time? Well, for the youth, it's they don't compete. It's ah. called a showcase. Okay. So every youth so or blue society can send a youth band, and uh, they don't have the youth compete. I think because the parents get too crazy. <laughs> oh, kind of like, kind of like little league, I suppose. I was going to exactly. say like dance moms. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but like these guys, they could have been a competition band yes. this year, but then you have to go all week. So mm. for the youth challenge, you only have to be there for the weekend, and they're all in school. So we kind of just stuck with that. But program. this is this is really kind of preparing them for any future competitions, right? Absolutely. Oh, this is so exciting. Yeah. And they've and we've interviewed several members, including Axel, uh, here tonight. Um, but the the group said that they've only been together like three years. Not even. Not uh, even so three it years. Was April of 2018. Wow. Yeah, wow. it's coming up on two years. It's under two years. That's that's pretty new. Yeah. And to be per performing at this level, I mean, I've hear I've heard nothing but positive things with the with the live performances. So, we're really happy to have them here at the original Sundance Loon, helping out WRLR 98.3 FM on our fundraising efforts. So. Right on. They're yeah. happy to be here. We're all happy to be here. Yeah. This is this is really great. Super and cool. You know, we really do hope to um, have them on, you know, come on to our morning show. I know that they have school and stuff, so that's a little hard. But come into the studio anytime, and anytime they just want to, like, knock out a few chords or something, that would be awesome. But Cool. I know they've enjoyed it. They were in last night on Dave's show. Oh, yeah. were they? Yes, yeah. They were. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you were listening to Eddie was listening, apparently. It that was, was really great. Fun. Yeah. Was the whole band there? Uh, no. No. Um, I was going to say, they it's a pretty big group. Fit. No yeah. horns, no horns. Yeah, no horns, right. Oh, my gosh. And they just brought their acoustic instruments. They didn't, they were unplugged. So. They were unplugged. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, while they're having fun, I'm still at work. <laughs> Looks like the opening band might be actually having a little acoustic set here as we speak right now. These guys are great. Yeah. yeah they sound amazing for the amount of... Uh, schooling that they only have here. Yeah, so these are students from the School of Rock in Libertyville, and actually they sound really fantastic, so they're, they're doing a good job as well. Yeah. They're super. We've bumped into these guys several times over the years so, yeah. uh, along the way. Yeah. Um, they played at the Highwood Pumpkin Fest one year, uh, right before Axel's band. Okay. Um, different kids, though. I mean, they're constantly rotating out of the School of Rock, you know, but... They're always, they always impress me. So did you teach Axel? Um, yeah. Uh, no, no. Like, I play, get, just fiddle around with guitar, like, not serious. I always uh, put it down for too long, you know? <laughs> but uh, when he was a little kid, you know, I used to play and sing to him. And um, he loved it, man. And as soon as he could hold one in his hand, off he went. He was ready. He was just yeah. a natural, huh? It was a natural. So it's just one of those gifts. Pretty Somebody's kind of born with it. Pretty much. I think, you know, a lot of times you get your kid going on an instrument and, and they put it down, you know. It's not yeah. for them. Right. But it just seemed to be Axel's thing, you know. He, Can't never, get it, he huh? never quit, yeah. Always has it in his hand. So he, he does guitar. Yep, yep. And was is that been his main instrument or does he pick yes. up other things? Uh, he loves to play the drums. Oh. He would not tell you that he's a drummer by any means. But he loves no, to play the drums. No, he's a vocalist. Vocalist and guitarist. He's, uh -huh. he's had to fill in on drums a couple times. But, uh, wow. yeah. No, guitar is his, is his thing. That's really great. Well, did you have any... Uh, Thanks a lot, you guys. Yeah. I, I enjoy chatting Eddie, with you. Eddie is the silent type when it comes to interviews. He's <laughs> silent but deadly. Eddie, it's nice to meet you, man. I'm so nice glad you guys are here. You. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah. Yes, and John, we, we appreciate you. We appreciate your son and the band. And everybody, come out right now. 
uh, the School of Rock is performing at the Sundance Saloon, the original Sundance Saloon, as we speak. But Axe and the Hatchet Men will be coming out, I think. What time? Any minute. Any oh, is it? Now. Is Tony had, flying we had, by? Some, we had some technical difficulties uh, earlier this evening, so sound check was delayed and every, everything got pushed back a little bit. So. And, that's, and that's fine because, quite honestly, it's a Friday night and people should be out drinking and eating and listening to live music anyway. So oh, yeah. You, you folks still have time to get out here and see. Um, you guys have plenty of time to come out here and have fun. Man from the beginning. Yes, absolutely. Right on. All right. Thanks well, again, thank you, you guys. John. You guys. Really right appreciate we'll talk it. Talk to you later. So we have one more song for you. Um, it's one of our favorites. Mac, do you have anything to say about it? We're going to listen in no, on the last song of the School of Rock house band. Uh, and then we'll uh, play some more Christmas tunes for you after that. Before the next band comes on stage, we're going to invite everyone else in the band, um, which I think is just Annika, but we're going to invite Annika back up on stage and we're going to just go through everyone's names again. Okay, so we have Annika Brody on guitar. Yeah. Matthew on bass. Yeah. Peter Lang on guitar. Jacob on drums. Charlie Miller on guitar. Mac McRae on vocals and guitar and cowbell. And I'm Claire Bryson. Thank you so much, Sundance. We love you. There's also, which I think is pretty cool, three hour-long host opportunities to be on the radio on 98.3 FM. So if you win one of those, you come on, you can play music, you can talk about whatever you want. It's a very, very cool experience. And the Hello? Okay, this mystique of being on the radio still exists. I know podcasts are all the rage nowadays, but it's a lot of fun to be on the radio. So that is a very cool opportunity. There was also one more thing that you found last night. Yeah, so I was out last night in Libertyville, and then Chris Solis in Libertyville is giving away a $50 gift certificate to eat there. So that place is awesome. Really, really good food. Great bar. Yeah, Chris, Chris Solis fans. Yeah. Really 
<laughs> yeah, it's a new Greek play, so um, we have that as well. All right, well, very cool. Again, thank you, everybody, for attending tonight. We really, really appreciate it. And again, tune in to 98.3 FM. There's such a, a variety of different shows for everybody out there. And again, thank you, Axe and the Hatchet Man and the School of Rock Band for, for helping us out, okay? So... Yeah, well, and and duh, thank you, Sundance, for hosting. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, so uh, up next, uh, Axe and the Hatchet Men. Welcome, everybody. We're still rocking hard here at Original Sundance Saloon in Mundelein, Illinois. We just got about a 45-minute set from the School of Rock Band, which was awesome. Very talented uh, teenagers there. Very cool. And now we're just starting off with Axe and the Hatchet Man. 
to hear them in the background. Ed, how's it going? Not working. Okay, so I'm 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 doing great, but I I'm not having trouble hearing you guys. Oh, they, actually, there you are. There you are. I got you. I got you. Oh yeah, there's the volume problem. Okay. All right. All right so, John, yes. Yeah, Jonathan Dawson. Jonathan Dawson. We actually just added horns. Yep. All right, we're just trying to find some balance oh, in the universe. Yeah. There, 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 there we go. go. All right, so, John, I'm David. How are you? Very well, thank you. This is Ed. Hey, John. So, John, uh, what's your part in the School of Rock? Tell us about the history of the, of the, the school, what it does, what it is. Okay. Uh, I'm a guitar teacher and um, show director uh, at the School of Rock, Libertyville, and uh, I teach guitar and bass lessons, and then I run the performance group, uh, and we play music like Pink Floyd, the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, you know, all that kind of stuff. And through that, we teach the kids about music theory yeah. and how to play music. So, I mean, is the whole motif dedicated to, to rock and roll? I mean, is, are there jazz choruses and stuff like that, or is it just rock? It's basically just rock, but we do use all of the music that influences rock. Sure, so, which is know, everything. Right. So, like, we'll play, you know... Santana and talk about Afro-Cuban rhythms. Did yeah. you know? All right, so I just found this out last night from a 17-year-old. I'm 50. Did you know that Black Magic Woman was written by Fleetwood Mac? I did. I didn't. Did you know no, that? I did not. No. Nobody. <laughs> I'm texting my friends in Portland. I'm like, did you know this? I'm like, no. Crazy. Okay, well, good for you. You have one up, one up on me. <laughs> um, all right, so you're a guitar teacher, bass teacher. How long does the school have been in existence? And did it come from the movie? No. Okay. <laughs> it did not come from the movie. The movie was, it was actually a school that was started in Philadelphia. And it was called the Paul Green School of Rock. And uh, what happened was that it was franchised. And it's the school of rock that we know and love today. And there's, there's school of rocks all over the country and all over the world. We go to a summer fest and play. And there's, there's bands that are from School of Rocks in Brazil. Oh, in, really? In wow. Australia. Does one company own it all? Um, or have the rights to the name or whatever? It's a franchise. Okay, like, okay. Wow. So you both got it. They're, they're international now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really, it's unbelievable. I, I actually I thought about that earlier. Chicken or the egg, which came first, the, the movie, movie or the, or the, or the organization? <laughs> right. Yeah, because so. I remember I, I lived in Portland, Oregon for a while, and I was like, you know, five, ten years ago, I was driving down whatever road, and I'm School of Rock. I'm like, crazy. So it was just a lot <laughs> smaller before the movie, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Like, you know, the movie had to help your popularity, but... Yeah, um, imagine. Well, that's very cool. And this, I mean, it's such an awesome way to get, you know, kids in there and, like, learning music. And again, theory, you can learn everything you need to learn about music studying rock and roll. A lot of people want to, like, you know... Claim it's some sort of like you know underdog to like you know classical and jazz and stuff like that, right. uh, and it just depends on who you're talking about. Okay, you want to put together chord progressions like Prince? Go right ahead. Let's see if you can do it. Okay, with the G, C, and a D, you can't. Uh, right. He's so you know it's kind of kind of stuff. There's plenty yeah. of plenty of sophistication and talent in rock and roll, no doubt. Um, so that's very cool. So like, what's the um, like, what, do they go there, like, after school? Is it, a, is it a, like, a, a guitar? Like, I took guitar lessons. Is like a half an hour a shot? Is, um, it, is it a classroom thing? Is it? Okay, so it's after school hours. We usually start teaching around 2, from 2 to, say, 9, um, pretty much every day of the week. Um, there they are. They're the stars. They're, that's right. There's the school <laughs> rock stars. And, um... So, like, we have half-hour lessons, we have 45-minute lessons, and then we have our performance program, which is where we put the kids into groups and have them play rock music together. And that's really where they're sure. really, really getting good quickly. What's your name, Yeah. That's well, awesome. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's one thing to go to lessons and just sort of do your lesson. Sure. But when you use what you learn in your lesson in a group with other musicians... Totally, totally, 100%, 100%. I mean, to be honest, I saw these guys a year ago. Go, and they're way better, and it's only been a year, you know. The people that were on stage tonight? No, this band. Axe and the Hatchiman? Axe and the Hatchiman. They're good. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're really good. Talented band. But it's just like our band started, and, and they're way better than they were six months ago. Oh, good. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's progress. Um, so, well, that's very cool. How long... Um, okay, cool. Well, John, thank you very much for coming okay, out here to tell us about. All right. Yep. Take care. Thank All right. We'll keep in touch. Nice, nice job with those kids. All right. Thank you. All right. Everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. And we'll be back shortly. We're going to send it back to automation in a moment.